Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill, the Sunday School lesson for November the 29th, 2020. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Oh, gracious and heavenly master, we come once again just calling upon your most holy and your righteous name. We thank you for your many blessings that you have already bestowed down upon us. We thank you for our early rising this morning. When our eyes came open, we was able to behold a brand new day. And we just thank you for starting us on another day's journey. We thank you for providing for us everything that we have. We thank you for food to eat, shelter our, our, our head and clothes on our back. We just thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Now we ask you to continue to lead and guide us in a way be pleasing in your sight. We ask that you will open our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive to your holy word. We ask all in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have been in the fall quarter the last three months under preparation of a nation. And unit one was under provision, which we studied in September. When the Israelites left slavery in Egypt, God guided them by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. He provided a way through the Red Sea, but stopped their enemies by drowning the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. He turned bitter water into sweet water and provided manna in the morning and quails in the evening. He provided water out of a rock and gave the Israelite army victory over the Amalekites and provided judges to help Moses govern the people. And then unit two, which was instruction, which we studied in October, God delivered Israel from the Egyptian for them to be his representative to the other nation. God gave them laws to govern all aspects of their life and he made a covenant with Israel establishing the nation as God's people and defining God's expectation of the Israelite. And then in unit three, which was correction, which we've been studying all in November, this is our, going to be our last lesson. God, he bring judgment on Israel because of the sinfulness of Israel rebellion. The Israelite violated God's covenant with them. However, God did not forsake them, but used correction to further prepare his people as they headed to the promised land. They did not deserve God's mercy, but they was graciously given a second chance. Our lesson for today is Moses reflect God's glory, which is coming from Exodus 34, 27 through the 35th verse. And I will go to the text read, And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they was afraid to come nigh him. Exodus 34 and the 30th verse. Our devotion reading is coming from Exodus 34 chapter and 1 through the 10th verse. And it reads as follows. Verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hear these two tablet tables of stones like unto the first. And I will write upon the tablet the words that thou was in the first table which thou brought it. And then verse 2. And be ready in the morning. And come up in the morning <clears throat> unto Mount Sinai. And present thyself there to me in the top of the mountain. And then verse 3 read, And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mountain, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. And verse 4, And he him, him two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning. And went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tables of stone. 
Verse 5, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Verse 6 reads, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And verse 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children, upon the children's children, until the third and to the fourth generation. In verse 8, And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And then verse 9, And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thy inheritance. And then the last verse, number 10, and he said, Behold, I will I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvel, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Amen. <clears throat> Our Lesson Moses reflect God's glory. And our lesson outline is divided into four. The first outline is the covenant recorded, which is Exodus 34, 27 through 28. And then the second outline is the covenant mediator, uh, 29 through the 30th verse. And the third is the covenant reconfirmed, which is 31 through the 32nd verse. And then the fourth is the covenant reminder, the 33rd through the 35th verse. The covenant recorded, our first outline, started out with the 27th verse. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tender of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Now instead of destroying Israel, God showed grace to them and reestablished the covenant with them by forgiving the transgression of the people. God had instructed Moses to carve out two tables of stone to replace the one he had destroyed. When Moses returned from the mountain and found the people worshiping before the hour, God would once again inscribe the Ten Commandments on them. When Moses met with God on Mount Sinai, he is told to write what we find in Exodus 34, 12 through 26, that give a summary of the covenant stipulation reciting portion of the requirement recorded earlier going back to Exodus 20. The summary of these laws was not intended to supersede the book of the covenant but whether to confirm and reinforce it. The covenant was renewed not upon these words only, but after the tenor, the general aspect of bearing. These words constituted the condition upon which God established his covenant with Israel and would leave no doubt as to the obligation of the people. And then verse 28, it reads, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tab table the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now Moses spent another forty days and night on the mountain with God, which he neither did not eat, nor drink anything. God himself wrote on the second set of stone tablets as he had written on the first set. In Deuteronomy 10 and the fourth verse, Moses confirmed that God wrote the tablets and gave them to him 
confirm that God wrote what he has spoken unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. God was graciously restoring the covenant with his rebellious people. The resurrection of the covenant gave assurance to the people that God had forgave them. God was willing to forgive the Israelites for their sin, and God will surely forgive us when we genuinely repent and confess our sin. God's forgiveness is unlimited because of the sacrifice of Christ on our behalf, which is sufficient to cover all our sin. And then the second outline is the covenant mediator, which starts off in the 29th verse. And it reads, and it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, which he came down from the mount, that Moses wished not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Now after 40 days, Moses came down from the mountain with the two tables of testimony. He was carrying a stone tablet, which was inscribed with the Ten Commandments that represented the covenant God had entered into with Israel. However, Moses did not know that his face was glowing, which showed he shone, which was a result of his contact with the Lord, talking with him face to face. The glory of God has revealed to Moses in this occasion caused his face to become radiant. When we spend time with God in a mountaintop experience, we may have a certain glow about us. And then in verse 30, it reads, And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they was afraid to come nigh him. Now, when Aaron and the rest of the children of Israel saw Moses, they were afraid of Moses when they saw his face shine. The supernatural appearance terrified them. It not only dazzled their eyes, but struck at such an awe upon them. The brightness of the eternal glory, even though Moses only witnessed it in a modified manner, was so reflected in his face that Aaron and the people were stricken with awe and fear to approach him until they received words of encouragement. Now there can be no doubt that that fear arose from a sense of guilt. The beaming radius of his countenance made him appear to be to that awestruck conscience as a flaming minister of heaven. The glowing beams of light Shining from his face was a new experiment. Unlike the first 40 days and night on the mountain, the second 40 days and night exhibited a physical change in Moses' appearance. However, it was evidence to everyone except Moses. So why did Moses' face glow only after this second extended period on Mount Sinai? Well, I'm glad you asked that. This new experiment was seeing the glory of God, which God has given him in response to Moses' request in verse 18, where Moses said, show me thy glory. God had given him a deeper revelation of his essential being. Having seen God's glory in this unique way was now physically reflected in his face. Moses returned from the mountain the second time was much different than the first. The people remained faithful this time. However, the people stood apart from him in fear when he returned. They knew that Moses had been in the presence of the Lord, which affirmed that God was still present with his people. And then the third outline is the covenant we confirm, which is the 31st through the 32nd verses. It started off in the 31st. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. Moses called upon Aaron and the elder of the congregation to come to him, 
assuring them that there was no cause for fear. Moses then proceeded to talk to them. Now, even though it is not stated, but whatever Moses said to them, it seemed to calm their fears. When God's glory shines, it will bring fear to mortal men. Peter, James, and John were terrified when the shining glory of God overshadowed them during the transfiguration on the high mountain. And that's found in Matthew 17, 1 through the 6th verse. Peter, James, and John was frightened by the powerful voice speaking to them out of the cloud. The voice was not meant to frighten them, but to confirm Jesus' identity and to acknowledge the validity of of their faith. God, he delights in confirming to us that Jesus is Lord and that our faith is not in vain. Then verse 32, and afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. After being assured that they had no need to fear them, the whole congregation drew nearer to Moses. Moses told them all the commandments the Lord had spoken to him on the mountain. Moses, he taught the people everything that the Lord had told him, which was the commandment that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And then this brings us down to our last outline, the covenant reminder which is the 33rd through the 35th verse. And the 33rd read, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Now when Moses was done speaking to the people, he wrote, he wrote a veil to cover his face so that the people could not see it as it glowed. The veil became part of Moses' war war and was worn except on two occasions. The veil remained on his face except when he brought a message from the Lord to the people and we went into the tent to speak with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 3 and the 13th verse, the apostle Paul explained that Moses veiled his face so that the people would not see the flake fading glory of the law, of the, law the legal dispensation. It typified the veil fading glory of the old covenant in contrast to the unveil and lasting glory of the new covenant. The imagery of Moses' shining face represented the children of the new covenant. The new covenant is in Jesus Christ that never fades. And then in verse 34, and when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out and he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Now when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him in the tabernacle, he took the veil off until he came out. And when he came out, he taught the children of Israel what the Lord had told him. The people were frightened by the glory reflected in Moses' faith. It could have reminded them of God's just wrath against their sin. Moses' veiled face was also a continual reminder of that covenant with a holy God who demanded holiness in his people that would set them apart from the other nations. And then our last verse is verse 35. And it reads, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. The children of Israel continued from time to time to see the face of Moses, how the skin of Moses' face shone. He spoke to them on veil when he had a message from the Lord. But otherwise, he covered his face when in their presence. This phenomenon would remind them of God's holiness and his presence among them. 
When Moses, he returned from Mount Sinai, his face shone with the reflected glory of God. The people was amazed by Moses' glowing face. Just as those who are amazed by the good works of a Christian who shine God light on this dark world. Moses' experiment served as a symbolic expression of how eminent fellowship with God illuminates the soul with a divine radiance. Jesus proclaimed to his disciples that Christians are the light of the world. When God light shine from the good works of a Christian, it brings glory to the Father. We shine a light openly rather than hide it so that we glorify the God the Father in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Moses' glowing face represents the future light of the world which will come through Jesus' physical presence and the good work of the children of God. Amen. This concludes our lesson. And on next Sunday lesson, which is December 6th, which will be the testimony of John, we'll be going to the book of St. John, the first chapter, 15 through the 28th verse. And our devotion reading is coming from Matthew 11, chapter the 7 through the 14 verses and we want to remind you of uh, our Sunday morning worship which will be coming on at uh, 10 o'clock later on today it will be found on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page and we will have a guest speaker this morning uh, Elder Petty from the New Home uh, Baptist Church and then on Wednesday night Bible study uh, this is at 6 o'clock and it's also on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. And both of them is available later on your YouTube channel, First Baptist Church of Washington Hills. Now let us pray. Oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come once again just thanking you for all what you do for us. We thank you for bringing us from a mighty long way, Lord. We thank you for opening our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive to your holy word, Father. We ask you to continue to lead and guide us in a way to be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Heavenly Master, we be careful to give you all the honor and the glory for you is worthy of all our praise. We just magnify your name for you. your name stand above all other names. You is God and you is God all by yourself. We thank you for being a loving God. We thank you for being a God that cares about us. We thank you for being a God that cares for us so much that you send your darling son to die for our sin. And we thank you, Father, for your plan of salvation. Thank you for demons worthy to be included in your plan. Now, Heavenly Master, we just give you the honor and the glory once again for you is worthy. We praise your holy name. We thank you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, Father. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you once again for listening to us, and we want to bid you a good rest of the day. And until we meet again on next Sunday, we bid you a good farewell.